Welcome, everybody. I see everybody's here. That's very cool. We got the recording going down here. We do indeed. Welcome, everybody, to uh, class eight. We're going to look at some uh, of the, uh, the stories that you've done. Uh, I see Denise up at the top. Denise, did you get my email back? I did, I did, but I was burning the midnight oil to get my assignment in today. No, no problem. I just want to make sure you got it back. All right. I did. I'll right. take care of it today. No, no problem. Ah, uh, right. welcome everybody. Who we got a great group of people here, and we have some really great photographs to look at too. By the way, let's get over here and share. Um. I'm, I'm really, really pleased with this, this group of, of photographers that we have on this journey. Really pleased. There's a, a very high level of uh, creativity here and a very high level of technical skill. Um, shooting food is, is not easy, but you guys are, are doing a beautiful job with it. Just really, really lovely. Let's get into this here with our first photographer, uh, is Ron Mayhew. Hey, Ron. Did I see Ron here? Ron is not here. We'll come back to Ron. I am maybe, oh, that's 1032. I know Bob Royer is here. Oh, yeah. There. <laughs> yeah. Really like how you tied all the red in. Bob, it's really nice. Got a, a color palette going here that's that's really, really good. Chocolate looks great down here. Uh, how Did you do any retouching on this chocolate? Uh, yes, yes, on all the chocolate. Yeah, yeah, very well done. This chocolate looks good leaning in here. This looks great. Um, your, your banana pudding is a little bright, a little bright. Okay. Let's bring it down a little bit. And the reason is we're... If, if you went to print this, even on inkjet, that's gonna be a hard line to see, okay? okay? So if we just bring that down a little bit, like take the whole pudding down to maybe something like uh, that shadow area here or that, that area there, we're gonna see more yellow and less white. The reason it's bright is you're getting a reflection of your, uh, your lighting off the top, angle of incidence, angle of reflection. Yeah, really, really nicely done. Thank you. And your story is great. Um, how to make the uh, the uh, uh, what are these like fudge the, nut bars or what are the they? Nanaimo bars? They're called the Nanaimo bars in, up here in Canada. So and they're oh. they are uh, well known right across the country. So do they do they involve moose droppings? Yeah, <laughs> it could be another name for them. <laughs> well, they, they look great. And I, like I said, I love that you brought that red in and you stuck with it everywhere. All your, uh, all your containers are the red that really, really helps sell the shot very nicely. Thank you. Well done. Really well done. Let's look at your lighting. Uh, I missed that. Oh, you didn't? It was just... That? It was just it was just window light with a scrim to the left. To the left over here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, great highlight on the knife. Great highlight on the, even on the inside of the, the knife here is reflecting a little bit of the chocolate and all this white out here. Uh, looks really good. Lighting's good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Is Phyllis here? <clears throat> no Phyllis yet. Okay. Uh, Nina? I'm here. Where are you? Oh, there you are. Um, I got to see your lighting before I say anything. It's out of focus. Sorry. I think, Nina, when you're shooting with the iPhone to get these behind it, have one less cup of coffee. I'm good. <laughs> Shall do. Um, yeah. Um, so your lighting is basically through this, uh, you made a scrim, right? Yeah, so this isn't yeah. the lighting, this is just the lighting for the final one. For okay. 
so it's not for all of them. But yes, I made a scrim. And a box behind the scrim then? Yeah. And that's, did you use the box behind the scrim for pretty much all of them? Yeah. Uh, no, two of them are in my kitchen um, from my very bright lighting. So the coffee is from my kitchen and the eggs are from my kitchen. Okay. So this is actually sunlight coming in here. Yeah. Beautiful. And you've, you've blended everything so nicely. You got the avocado and you got the green up here and you got the, the, the whites of the eggs is, you know, almost everywhere in the, in the shot. We got all that picked up. It ties together beautifully. Just really, really beautifully. Um, so you. this is the, your strobe light here through the, yes. through the scrim. The bottom okay. two of the strobe, yep. Okay. Or the soft box. Yeah, avocado looks really, really good. Let's fix that on the knife. Uh, Just straighten that out. Um, all of this looks really nice. This nice, you set the idea of morning light up perfectly with the first shot. Because we just know in, intrinsically, we know that sunlight, you know, it might be a strobe somewhere, but that's what it looks like. It looks like sunlight. And it is. Uh, and I love the way it lit the edges of the eggs. That's just so cool. So cool. So you've already set us up for um, the morning light. Uh, then you get down here and you do it with the soft box. We've already, we've already bought that it's morning light. We're already, we're already there. Uh, love what you did. Really good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. This is, uh, uh, where are you located, Nina? Minnesota. Minnesota? So the background of the composite shot, that's, uh, does, yeah. So does that, with all, everything in it, does that work? Because what it is, is it's old particle board that had a bunch of construction dust on it. And I put it behind and it seemed to work as a background. Sure. <laughs> absolutely you know the, the 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 thing that you if you get really get into food the thing that drives you crazy is storing all the the junk that you pick up and and that your neighbors and your spouse think you're you know you're going oh look at that old palette and they're going what's what? wrong with <laughs> nina she yep. needs help <laughs> <laughs> that's what's that's happening <laughs> yeah and you drag back old wood and metal and uh -huh. You know, you love the rust. Yeah, it's it's really, really great. That's fine. Thanks. That that works very well. And it's just enough out of focus. We can't really, our eyes don't even look at it and say, what is that? We don't even question it. Thank you. So, yeah, nicely done. What camera, by the way? D850. Okay. Nice big files. Yep. Lauren. Lauren done. Hi. The story of bread. That's a good looking bread shot, man. Thank you, sir. This is a good, this is a good story. This is a, uh, you told it well. Start with the wheat, make the flour, flour into the bread dough, bread. Did you actually make bread? I actually made the bread. Oh, very cool. Back I want to say that I crowned the wheat, but I didn't. <laughs> I was going to say, did you grow the wheat? Did you get out there with the little Black & Decker wheat thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, um, your light is uh, is consistent. And uh, I, I set everything up and then just switched out the subjects. Got it. So keeping that consistency very nice. So you got, your, you got your light coming through a scrimmage. You got it down low. Yes, I've got it down kind of low. It gives that feeling of direction of light here. Uh, you, you got some fill going on? I do. I got a little, oh, you'll see I, it, it's blocked by the camera. But I got, a, I got a, a silver card there, and then I've got the little LED panel uh, to camera right. Oh, is that sitting down here behind the camera? Yep. Okay. All right, so that gives us just a little bit of light over there. Boy, those LED panels, I'm just crazy about those things. I just am falling in love with them. Um, I can't believe how nice they work. And for, for, for food, boy, 
you know, some of these things are battery operated, you know, these LEDs, you know, going out to a restaurant to shoot food, pack up two or three of these little $60 panels from Amazon, and you can do a lot of food photography. Little, little scrim and uh, you're good. Nicely done. It's your, your, your colors are great. You, you, the wheat uh, all the way through this one, this, you got a little orangey wheat here, a little orangey here, not so orangey here. I would make these colors match whichever way you want to go. You see what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. So let's get the, I like this color better than this. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. So let's get that color down into here and into this area here. This, it looks like you got a mixture of both. Looks, it's fine. Nicely brings in the bread. Cool. Uh, and what did you shoot it with? That was my, uh, that's a Nikon D750. And I'm at uh, F8 at 40th of a second. Got it. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Ah, this is beautiful. Julie, where is, is Julie here? Darn it, we're going to have to come back for so many people, I hope. She uh, she said said a note saying she has to uh, uh, watch her gallery. This, oh, okay. Uh, this well, then we'll go back and review her shots. Julie, these are beautiful, yeah. absolutely beautiful. Uh, window light, I think, for all of them. Uh, she did all of them flat lays, except the, the spaghetti here. No, the, just the two in the middle are flat lays. Here we go. Uh, I really like this old style of it's very comfortable lighting. It uh, natural light. Uh, it's interesting. She's got light coming from the left side on this picture and light coming from the right side on that picture. And both of these pictures looks like the lighting is above. You look at the look at the position of the highlight. Looks like the lighting's right above it. Uh, these are beautiful, Julie. Really. Really great. Spaghetti and meatballs. Yes. Sounds like a plan. Oh, no, it's not window light. It's softbox. All right. Or be behind the scenes for a flat lady. She has it. Okay. Window light for the, the that one. Uh, and the meatball over the pasta. Uh, and then uh, uh, strobes for the uh, over uh, overhead shots. Really pretty, Julie. Very pretty. Let's see, is, uh, did anyone come in that I missed their pictures? Not yet. Uh, Teresha. Is Teresha here? Oh, my goodness. Okay. I'm here. Oh, you are here. I am. I just got here. Sorry. Not a problem. Uh, these are really nice. This is really, this great shot great shot um just nailed that now did you photoshop that in or is that did you catch the fall i caught the fall good for you darn that's nice thanks it took a while <laughs> oh yeah the and high the hand eye coordination is way more than we expect it to be <laughs> yeah yes um so it's tea so we've got uh, the ingredients for the tea yeah. here, or there, is that the ingredients? Yeah, well, it's loose leaf tea. So it's mm -hmm. basically tea, not in a bag. So yeah, these are the ingredients up in the upper left. Actually, all of them are the ingredients. And then mm -hmm. in that um, silver thing, yep, yeah. that's the ingredients inside there. Okay, so do you, when you're making tea like this, do you crush this further or just you just put all this stuff in the little silver bowl? Yep, you just put it in a little silver okay. bowl. Or like that's like dumped in up in the top. Um, you can just dump water in there and then strain it too. And then strain it after you, you do it? Yep. Got it. Okay. I, it, and I'm, it, it feels funny asking these questions. I had a tea client for two years. I did all their stuff, but I never, never tried their tea because at the time I didn't really care for tea. So I would shoot it, but I just wouldn't, you know partake of it. Now I like tea a lot. Now I'm thinking, oh, I should have taken advantage of that back then. Yeah. Her tea is really good. This is from um, 
a company out in Washington, uh, Mountain Mills. Well, it looks great. Um, really, really, really pretty. You kept the, the boards in two and the white background in two, so you've stayed nice and consistent. The lighting on this one looks very good. Somebody working on the front of my house. I didn't know it. Um, uh, the 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 light on the the uh, the cup here. Um, do, do we have a lighting shot? Okay. So they're oh. all lit. They're all lit different. <laughs> okay. So that is what is that one? That's the one with the the teacup thing, the strainer. This one here. Yep. Well, you're there. All there may all be lit differently, but you kept your lighting feel very consistent. I do like that. Thanks. Consistency is great. You do great little line of light coming down here on the on the uh, tea that's strained out, uh, and like I say, catching this fall like that, just amazing. Really nicely done. Thank you. Good, good. Uh, camera. Oh, I didn't put that in there. Um, 5D Mark II. Okay. And I think I used my 50 millimeter on all of them. Okay. How's that 5D Mark II holding up for you? It's getting a little long in the tooth, isn't it? I bought it used from a, a guy who shot weddings. So we'll see how long it lasts. <laughs> did he, uh, did he, did you uh, count the shutter actuations on it? Uh, I think, I think he had it. I bought it off eBay, so I'm not sure. I just really wanted a Canon full frame camera, so. Oh, you! I, it's a great camera. Yeah, so I did it's what I great. could to to get one. And okay. Figured me, I would upgrade. Let me maybe go against the grain a little bit. I know everybody doesn't want to believe it, but the 6D is an awesome camera. I, okay. I love my 6D. And one of the reasons I love my 6D is it doesn't cost $3,000, mm -hmm. you know? But I've shot the 6D and the Mark III. Mm -hmm. I've not shot a Mark IV, but I've shot the Mark III and the, my 6D, and I prefer my 6D. Okay. Uh, so, you know, you don't feel yet you're stuck in the big, big expensive camera. 6D is a little over a grand uh, okay. and affordable. But that Mark II is a wonderful camera. Awesome. Yeah. Nicely done. Good for you. Thanks. Ah, uh, Joel. Hi, Don. Hi. How's it going? Very good. Uh, I see we got people on. We got people here that I'm not seeing. There we go. Over there. Got it. All right. Uh, all right, Joe. So we're making apple strudel. Sled pie. Okay. So saw it on TV. It basically looks like a strudel, but they call it slab pie. So instead of a regular traditional pie for Thanksgiving, we did this one. Well, it's nicely presented. Uh, we got the apples and the colors and everything looks good. Keeping that flower looking texture is, is very good. You have a black card somewhere? There was black card off to the right with the Okay. Like coming through the scrim in the back for that one. Got it. My black card helps define the flower very nicely. Good, Joe. Nice. Let's look at your light. And no, there is no lighting. It was oh. it was different for each one. The, oh, uh, okay. From the left with the through the scrim for the top picture, and then the one on the first plate on the right was focus stacked. I'm trying that helicon focus out. Okay. So that just had a light directly behind it, kind of a harder light to, to get some of the texture off the top of that. And I just shot, it's probably about 40 shots stacked. <laughs> I wanted to see what I could wow. do. <laughs> shot from the front right to the back. Nice. And how then the work, apple. How to work out the uh, helicon? It's actually, it's working out good. I could show you what I'm doing right now. I'm getting my last, setting up the last picture for these little micro parts. Finally, it's a group. It's a group shot. <laughs> Try not to get any tangents in the picture. Yeah, good luck with that. Um, yeah, I know it's about ten pieces she wants in one little picture. So I'm working on it. 
And then the oh, apples yeah. just had a light behind it with a white card up front to light into the basket a little bit. Well, everything's soft and nice. Even your hard light here feels soft because we don't really see the shadow up here. We don't really get to it. We get up here. Uh, so everything feels very consistent. Good job, sir. Thank you. Good job. Mark Shaw's got two sets of images here. Mark's going with eggs. Eggs, yep. eggs, huevos. Sorry? Said huevos. Yeah. Well, uh, I like eggs a lot, so I like all these eggs. <laughs> <coughs> I did too. Um, these are nice. This is a, I like this very, this is really editorial, Mark. It's, you know, it's not advertising perfectly round eggs, you know, how they cook them in water and the little things and that's advertising. This really looks like restaurant dining or like, uh, you know, a, a, a recipe in someone's home. But what's extraordinary about this shot is it looks so simple and pretty. Look at the highlight. It's gorgeous on this, right? Just gorgeous. But look at your fork. Man, you nailed it. If you're going to have a fork that decorative, you got to show it off. You showed it off very well. This is a really nice shot, Mark. Thanks, Doug. This, this is uh, like what uh, magazine folks like, this right here. I'd, I'd, if I'd run that heart, that shot in a heartbeat. Uh, I, I like your um, your deviled eggs shot up here too. Uh, yeah, it's all a feeling of natural window light. Is that what it is? Nope. Really? No. Nope. Go back to the first shot and look in the comments. Yeah, and then you just oh, there we go. So a box behind a scrim. Wow. Yeah. And then to get the to light up the fork, I had a little small reflector card that I positioned just to make sure it reflected, had something to reflect. Wow, it looks great too. Just looks great. Wow, you captured that very soft window look, window like. I mean, that just if you told me a window, I would absolutely believe you. So that's really good, Mark. It's really good. Thanks, Don. Yeah. Um, uh, you like shooting food too, right? I'm enjoying it. I haven't done a lot of it before now, but I've really, you know, I've enjoyed this course. Um, you know, the nice thing about uh, food photography is you can do it anytime. And when you're able to control the light well enough to make it look like it's window light whenever you want to, even at 2 or 30 in the morning, um, that's, that's a nice technique to, to have under your belt. You know, because you can use you could use window light for three shots and then use strobe for three shots and nobody would tell the difference. Very cool. Thanks. Good job, Mark. Good job. Oh, and what camera? I forgot to ask. What camera? Uh, Nikon D810. Okay. And I used my 24 to 70. I had, uh, I think I did 40 millimeters for a few of the shots and then 70 for a couple of the others. Very cool. Very cool. Very nice. Denise Coleman. Wow, Denise. Hello. These are lovely. Thank you. Oh, look at you too. You are square, just square as a square edge. Good for you. Nice. <laughs> Horizon's right back there. You pull us all the way back and you haven't shown us a lot of Horizon we don't need to see. So you've got stuff. All I love this. Thank you. This is so nice, right up to the front. I'd spend most of my time back here on the sausage, but still, um, <laughs> right up to the front. That's nice. This is this is. These are beautiful, Denise. I love the subtle lighting here, and here, and the blood oranges with all the highlights on the top. You got if you're shooting lemons, oranges, grapefruits, etc. You've got to have these highlights, or the or the fruit looks. The dead and old and dry, and it happens that way really fast. Yeah, Thanks. I love your horizons down low. So your pot and your things are all above the horizon. Even broke the horizon with the the little plant there. Nice work. Thank you. Now, have you been shooting food a long time, or you've been listening intently through the course? 
Um, I did a lot of YouTube watching before I started the course for Good. a couple months. And, uh, and then through the course, that's it. Yeah, very nice. Thanks. And the, the Tony Kuiper luminosity masks, very nice. Um, yeah. So if you're using Tony Kuiper, were you a landscape shooter or are you a, 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 also a landscape shooter? Yes, I'm also a landscape shooter and um, a little bit of architecture, you know, scenics. Uh-huh. Yeah, yep. smaller yeah. scale scenics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, most of the people that I know that use the Tony Kuiper are somehow involved in scenic photography, landscapes, etc. cetera. Um, uh, it's, I love it. I love it. If you yeah, guys aren't too. familiar with it, just uh, grab it right off of uh, her page here. Just Tony Kuiper Luminosity. Um, he used to make actions. I think he's made a plug-in now. And I don't remember. Is yours a plug-in or is it an action? It's a, it's an action panel that plugs into the, um, okay. the menu system. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah very, very nice. He's, he Thank lives you. up uh, up north, and that's your lighting. Yeah, for three wow. of them. One of them I forgot. Nice. Where is this in your house? Is this? A... It's this is a south facing window. Those are great because you do have the opportunity to get real strong light in if you want it in the winter. Um, yeah, and then all you do is diffuse it and you have a you know giant soft boxes and stuff i'm learning i have to pay attention to uh where the sun's coming from so i set a tall um pepper shaker down on the uh -huh. table to see the direction of the shadow <laughs> got it yeah got so it. that because for a while i was at this window but and thinking i was getting backlight maybe but the the sun was actually on the other side because it gotten later in the day Ah. So I, I think I did better this time with my shadows. Well, you can actually, you could actually build a scrim. I don't know where you would store it, but you could build a scrim the size of the window. And when you come oh. in and shoot, you just stick that up there. And then you have this giant, giant light, you know, that you don't have to worry about. But the direction of the scrim, and we do this all the time in the studio, you've got your scrim set up. If you put your soft, you can put your soft box here. Or you could put your, uh, okay. Or you could put it here, or you could put it back here, or you could bring it at an angle like this so that it's brighter here and then it falls off. That's the beautiful thing about a scrim. You can move it around uh, your light and you have so many options available to you. And with that scrim outside, eventually you could actually just take a, a strobe outside on a stand, right? And mm -hmm. blast it back through the window. If you wanted to get a little, you know, a little more light on the left side, do that. Ah, uh, yeah. Do you think um, shears would help? Would they act like a great big scrim? They, there? they can, as long as they're not real wavy. If you can pull oh, them okay. and they're fairly, you know, they, they can't, they don't have to be perfect, but they're fairly smooth, then absolutely. Uh, yeah, shears okay. would be great. That'd be more likely to happen. <laughs> yep. Well, much easier to use than a great big old eight foot by eight foot scrim. Yeah, that's probably not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Very nice. Thank Denise. you. Thank you. Lee. Yes, sir. We have a recipe here for tapas. Yes. Very cool. So I'm just going to drag that right off onto my desktop because I love bell peppers. Actually, they turn out very good. They were very good. Now, do, do you do you uh, not use meat because you're a vegetarian, or is there just not meat in this one? No, we are we are vegetarians. We don't eat meat. Okay. We do eat fish, but no meat. Okay. Yeah, very, these are, these look great. Nice lighting. Where's your lighting coming from? Did you put a lighting shot in? Uh, yes. But I, I think um, because I, I uploaded a shot after I uploaded the peppers, I think it's must be around. Okay. I, 
Mm. Must be after a couple shots, I guess. Okay, we'll find it. We'll find it. Looks looks delicious. And what is your lighting? Uh, a softbox from the back. Okay. Top back. And a little strobe speed light with a snoot. Okay. On camera left. And that's it. Oh, and uh, two white cards. Camera right and camera left. I love your soft shadow up front here. Really Thanks. delineates the bowl so beautifully. Light. It's a little bit dark here because of the wood, then it gets light and then it gets darker up front, but the bowl stays perfect white. That gives us depth. Um, Thank you. Yeah, very cool. Very, very cool. Judy Hernandez. Um, hi. Hi. Uh, pomegranate? Yes. Nice. Are these multiple uses of pomegranates? Is that what? I'm yes. Looking at? Okay. Kind of out of order because I really struggled with creating that canvas, but um, the bottom left would be my first one. And that's when I was, um, well, when I was writing my little story, uh, how to get those seeds out of the pomegranate shell. And that's what the paddle, that big spoon is for. Cause once you, you know, cut the, uh, the skin, uh -huh and uh -huh. crack it open, you turn it upside down and then smack it with that spoon and they just start falling out. You're kidding. No, but they go all over the place. So the other option would be to use a bowl with cold water, break off a piece and then slowly kind of uh, with your thumbs, uh, work those pieces into the water. The membrane will come out too, but it floats. So it's easy to take it out. I did not know that. Yeah, I didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> when Whenever I was a kid, I, had, I used to eat them all the time, and I'd have, you know, a, a red stained face, red stained. I was going to say purple like fingers those. for at least three days. Yeah, yeah. Oh, very cool. I've well, learned so something I else today. Okay. <laughs> they're in season right now. Uh, and they're great on salads. Yes. They're really great on salads. Very nice. I love that you kept the um, the surface the same. Uh, right. And it looks like you kept your lighting pretty much the same because you're doing everything lay flat. Yes. The so I'm right light, though, right? Light is pretty much the same all the way through. All yeah. the way. Yeah. yeah. I used a soft box on the left, camera left, mm -hmm. and a white card uh, kind of uh, camera right and to the front. I really like your composition, uh, Judy, the way you're working this stuff in here. Uh, composition's very nice. Spoon looks great. Again, composition really, really works in all of your shots. Thank Good you. Good work. Yeah. Good work, Judy. Good work. And Thank that's you. your that's your behind the scenes. There's your big soft box coming through a scrim. Right. And your you know. My don't wife. you love it? Did you make this or did you um, pick this up at uh, Target? <laughs> uh oh no i just uh, i think i got that at the dollar store and just scored it and uh, okay. you know, cut yep. it in half i've got a couple of them now you know so yeah they're really they're really great you make these little these little uh teeny v cards because they stand up on their own yeah yeah good job judy what camera um the fuji xt20 got it okay Beautiful. but i'll tell you what now that you've talked about that 6d because i've been wanting to get a full frame <laughs> I, I might go with that because it's affordable. I really, I really, really like that camera. And the new one has the flip out screen. Uh, the Mark II? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. I really, really, really like the camera. Yeah. So. I've been wanting a full frame, but gosh, they're expensive. So I think that one's affordable. Well, you, if you look around, um, uh, you can find, uh, are you already Canon? Are, are you? I do have, uh, my first camera was a Canon, a little T5, and I do have some lenses that are EF. Okay. Uh, the, EF, EF lenses. the EF, I think, works, right, on them? I believe it does. On yeah, the, the EF works on um, both the crop and the full frame, but right. the EFS was only for the crop. Right. Yeah, you should, that should be, I would look into it, but at the same time, you can find uh, the first, 60, which I, I just used last weekend. You can find the first 60 up on uh, eBay for about, I want to say about 600. 
Oh, that would be great. Yeah. So it's a, you know definitely affordable. It's a very, that. very good camera. I love it. I love my 60s. Great. Awesome. I'll check into it. Thanks. Yep. Jay. Where's Jay? Jay's always here. There's Jay. Jay, are you at your, or did you go to Jay? Oh, there he is. Hi. Yeah, this is the, this is a behind the scenes. So this okay. isn't, uh, I've been using this setup with the scrim off of a, a door window and the white background, which I, I used for the uh, two of the four shots, but you are, which will come up eventually, I guess. Don, we yeah. just passed the behind the scenes. Yeah, we'll go back. My to behind that. the scenes. Yep, yeah, we'll go back to it. Making a rosemary roasted Brussels sprouts with fresh cranberries. I love the fact that you got in tight with Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprouts, by the way, are really fun to shoot. <laughs> They're a bit of a challenge. Yeah. They have all these little marks on them. So I spent some time cleaning them up. Yeah, this is a nice, this is a really nicely presented um, set of images here. I love, I got to tell you, I, I love these two close-ups and this this one here with all the color in there. That's really beautiful. Yeah, it's, I really like that myself. Yeah, come because everything, the, the, the red bleeds from the uh, uh, cranberries mm -hmm. into, into the Brussels sprouts. But lightly, it's not a, a heavy dye. Yeah, um, really. And then against the, the background of the bowl came out nicely. Yeah. But, I, but I I used extension tubes at extension tube for the first time. So mm -hmm. that's how I was got the uh, close ups on the uh, uh, Brussels sprouts and the cranberries. So that worked out very well. I was quite pleased with that. Yeah, very good. What and your lighting is this basically this thing here. Light mm -hmm. from the window onto the, with the white card? The white card's across, yeah, and camera left. Camera above at this point. Yeah, very, and so you shot, you shot yourself straight down? Mm, no, actually, I was on the side looking towards it. Okay, all right, got it. This is, this about is a straight 30, 45 degree. down, and these are kind That's of, a top uh, down, yeah. yeah. Very good, man. They were from yep. the sides, yeah. Yep, when you're using the Fuji XT system. Three. Yep. The 35 millimeter lens. Very nice. Well done. All right, so Lee, this is your setup shot. Yeah. Thank you. The, the box over the top. Yes. Very cool. What's the, it's, where it's is very this simple. aimed? Where is this aimed? Uh, it is aiming right in the middle of, there's uh, the purple olives. It's kind of mm -hmm. in the center. It's aiming to the purple olives. In here? Right there, yes. Okay. Because it was getting too dark, but it needed a little bit of extra punch, especially in that area. And Well, you've got such, it's, it's done so well that I don't see any sign of it here. I don't see... Uh, any you know hard shadows that are appearing from it you blend yeah, it, it in very nice yeah. and it has a little bit of, I, it has a, an extra grit in okay. the light so That's you're really focusing in on here yeah yes very cool nicely done yeah. nice use Thank of you. the of the, of the uh, uh, snoot without making the snoot you know be harsh because mm -hmm. they can be very harsh so you have Thank a suit and you put a grid at the end of it. So it's a very, very tiny grid spot. Yes. Very, yeah, very, very tiny. cool. Yeah. Good. Good, good. Jean. Yes, done. Hi. These are Hi. nice. This is, I Thanks. love this. I just love that. That's just very cool. That's my least favorite. I'm glad you like it. Oh, it's just so gritty and fun and like right off the farm and the, the old the baking dish is is looking really just good it just looks very real these are nice shots as well that one just really kind of grabbed me um right. i like your colors are you, know, you really kept your colors all nice and clean through here um 
And what is what is it that you're making? Uh, root vegetable? It's a root vegetable casserole. So you just go get anything that grows in the ground and chop it up and bake it and add some tomatoes and cheese and you're good. So that's the Italian way of cooking. Well, it's also cook, German cook anything peasant you want food. as long as you put spaghetti sauce on it. Exactly. There you go. We'll eat anything that will last through the winter. We had two root cellars and grew a whole bunch of stuff. So this is how I grew up. Yeah. Well, I really like this. I really, I really like it. I get it's very editorial, very magazine looking uh, and uh, very clean. And it tells the story. This is a nice little thing that you set up up here with the cheese and the tomatoes. Uh, is this a, is this a grater? Yep. Okay. It is. Yeah. Very cool. That looks delicious. Thanks. And what it is, is delicious. Lighting? What is your light? Just... It should be there. Okay. So I'm still on my LED panels. I tried, my kitchen is small. I tried to set up a, a mm -hmm. soft box and that just wasn't going to work at all. And so um, I'm still on my LED. That's the top of my portable dishwasher. And mm -hmm. um, we sort of lost the kitchen for several hours. I would, I would encourage you instead of worrying about the soft boxes because the soft boxes for these LEDs are they're a hassle to put on, you know? No, I just meant a traditional soft box. <coughs> oh, I would just get a, a two foot by two foot uh, scrim made. Just oh, yeah. wood frame, scrim it up because these panels sure. behind that scrim are just um, amazingly beautiful. Really, okay. really beautiful. And you can bring can it in done. really close to the scrim if you want mm -hmm. it to be more poppy and you can pull it exactly. away from the scrim if you want right. it to be a little bit softer. So it's a good very, idea. Very nice. I can do that. Well, I'm so, a big um, fan of these guys. I'm I'm now saying that I've added this to my. I've had a list of two things every photographer should have. One's mm -hmm. a shower curtain. Yep. Uh, the other one is these five-in-one reflectors, and I've just added one of these panels should be with every photographer should have one of these panels. It yep. will do amazing things. Even filling in uh, portraits outside, you can do right. it with these panels. Yep. I have, um, I think I have four of them now. Mm -hmm. And I like this one in particular because it has the barn door so I can do some directionality of the mm -hmm. light. And I like mm -hmm. that. And it has, it sits inside a bracket so that you can tip the light. You can change the angle of the light and feather if you want. And yeah. that's what it did for some of them. I just changed the angle a tiny bit so that the light was the light was um, hitting differently. Like the tomatoes Ooh. have softer light, but it's the same light than the root vegetables. And so Got um, I like being able to play with it. I played with it again to make sure that um, I didn't get too harsh a light on the back of the bowl. So yep. that's when it, that particular light I like what? because it has the bracket and I can change it. I have others that don't have the bracket and I'm more limited. Yeah, so you have so you have to get a bracket that goes between your stand and the light that has the swivel. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But these it's a a newer light and mm -hmm. it has the bracket built in and so yeah. it allows me greater flexibility and creativity with the light. Very good. I really 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 like it. Really Oops. really like it. Uh, my wife so the behind like, just brought the brought the baby in uh, and I don't know mm -hmm. if you saw her standing there. She just voted for your shot of the, for the same the roof shot of Oh nice. As well. That's great. I'm glad. That's a that's a high recommend. I like that. She's been she's been looking at photography for forty years. <laughs> she's my biggest. Still critic. have a good eye. Yeah, she does. Alex, are you here? You are here. Hi. How are you? Good. Olives. Yep. <laughs> wow. These are raw olives, so I can tell they're pretty the purple. Chicken. You said yes. This you said you had a your new house had olive trees, right? Just one, yeah. Nice. How fun! Now, are these eating olives or are these olive oil olives? Um, I think they can be either. But to be honest, from one tree, you'd only get about a coke can's worth of oil. So <laughs> we're trying we're trying the eating and seeing how that goes. That's cool. Do you have to soak them in brine or something first? Or yeah. 
so you know, it was six days of rinse of soaking them in water <laughs> and changing the water every day and then now they're in brine for a month and then I guess you test them and see if they're soft and if they are then you can pickle them uh and put them in you know vinegar and then they go in olive oil for a while <laughs> How it's many, kind of a long process. How many thousands of years did it take for people to figure out that they had to do all that before they could oh, eat I it? I don't know. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I think um, I read industrial production of them. They use quick lime or something like that. <coughs> so, wow, it speeds the process up. But traditionally, uh, yeah. yeah, it's really very natural so. approach to them. Very, very cool. I'm glad you left the little stem in there. Just really just makes it so much more like it's just freshly picked. Mm -hmm. Very nice. That's that so your I'll, take, I'll take some more pictures. Is that your as son? The process continues. Yeah, that's my son. <laughs> yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah, document it. We'd like to know how to make olives. That would be cool. <laughs> That'd be very cool. Now, will these be black olives or will they be, they're not going to be I think they're going to be brown, honestly. Really? Um, yeah, you know, like the, the Greek ones you can get, the Kalamata. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think well, they're well. going to be like that because I don't think they're black enough. They looked black on the tree, but then when we picked them, we were like, oh, they're, they're kind of red. Yeah, well, so. that's cool because those are the most expensive olives. <laughs> right. The purple ones, yeah, great. Nicely done, Alex. Beautiful. Thanks. Beautiful. Arnold. Hi, Don. Hi, Hi everyone. Did you shoot this in one single shot? Yeah. Very nice. Shoot I did down. also take individual shots in the comment. Mm -hmm. Really nice. Yeah, well, you, yeah, that's cool. Uh, these are shot in such a way. Um, that you could, uh, you know, you could use them. I don't think you could, I don't think they're gonna fit together if you tried to make a collage because they all look a little bit different, but you shot it as a single image here. And they I did, really I good. did shoot that as a single image. You did? Yeah, I did. Yeah. This picture was shot with a single image. Yeah. So there's no composite. The other one, um, I actually just shot each one of them from right. the same setup. Right. But you moved them to the middle part, right? To shoot them? No. Actually, I just moved the camera. Move the camera? When I you just move moved the, the camera. camera you, when, when you move the camera, you change the reflection. So that's that's why they wouldn't fit together very, very cleanly. You could make them fit, but um, yeah, very nice. Do you think they work as the story? Um, I mean, as a story image. Yeah, you got the ingredients, the ingredients, and you put them together. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Well done. Um, so this is pretty nice. I could learn how to make. Are these called canapes? Yeah, that's actually. Water. That's actually the process. I mean, that's actually how they call it as well. Adhesives, base, body, garnish. So that's it. Very nice. What did you use for light? Uh, just oh. a single yeah. strip light. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, I tried everything and it didn't have enough fall off. It didn't have enough presence. So the simplest setup was what worked. Yeah, that's great. That's great use of a strip light too, by the way. Nice and even all the way through the picture. All the but way I, through. Very nice. But, but I had to add some reflectors because to control the contrast, the tonal contrast. Yeah. The, I originally had the five in one and it didn't give me enough. Um, the shadows were still pretty dark. So I had to add another set of uh, bounce, uh, white bounce cards. Yeah, well, when your light is down that low across this reflective surface here, you know, you're going to get a little bump. You're going to get a little bump of light right here. But as soon as you get that far away from the light, it's just not going to give you anything anymore. Right. So you put up the white cards over here. We get a little bit of texture left in this back, right? 
right. the stuff. Yeah. Yeah, these things are magic, folks. You got to use them all the time. Yeah, very good. Nicely done, Arnold. What Excellent. camera? All right, thank you. What camera? Oh, uh, uh, Nikon D750. Uh, behind the scenes, there somewhere. I don't know why it didn't. Oh, there it is. Okay. There's behind the scenes, but I didn't see that. It didn't say what camera. Or maybe you put that in the comments here. Oh, there it is. All right. Anyways. Jan. Hello. Hi, Jan. Hi. Before I before I start with you, did anyone come in late and then we missed their pictures up front? I I know we missed some pictures up front. Anybody here that we missed pictures up front? Uh, uh, Ron Mayhew. Ron here Mayhew. And, yeah. yeah. We, we and Phyllis Ron. Charney. And Phyllis. Okay, we'll go back up and get those. Thank mm -hmm. you. Um, Bonnie Mitchell's here. I don't know if you did, Mike. Um, and Julie Larue. Also, I just got in. It was a long route, but I got in. Oh, yeah, we did look at yours, Julie, because uh, uh, I thought you said you couldn't make it because you were at the studio. Well, I said I would be late, but that's oh, okay. okay. I'm, that's fine if you if you reviewed it. That's, that's yeah, fine. They're, they're lovely. All right, Thank Jan, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take a quick look again. No problem, Julie. Um, these are, this is very nice work. What, what is, your background is great. Flower on metal or what? No, it's... Um, it's a vinyl background, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. It's just it just looks like um, like stone, but it's actually vinyl. So I just I I've just put it out flat on the one, bottom one on the left, and for the and the top one on the left, and for the others I've just had it. Well, for the top one I had it straight down, and for the uh, bottom right I had it. Um, just coming forward, just coming down and forward. Got it. Yeah, like a sweep. Yeah, like a sweep. That's it. That's the word. This is the. It's such artistic work. It's very delicate work. I love the colors that you use. The yellows pop. The warmth of the eggs against this very pale, cold stone. Uh, this works really, really beautiful. Thank you. And the same with the, the yellow, same as the, the yellow against that. Um, now you took some of the coldness out of this one. Um, I'm yeah. not sure I would tell you to do that. I think I would say, let's leave the coldness so that they match. Yeah, okay, yes. Because I wouldn't want you to take this one and warm it up like that. You know no. what I'm saying? Okay. That I wouldn't want. I think I'd match the cold. You've already got it cold up here. Yes. Um, but I think that surface, you see, and you see what I'm saying, it right? Yeah, I do. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Match those in. up. Yes, yeah, certainly. Yeah. Tie it in and go for this lighter here, not the darker, obviously, the lighter. Um, what is your lighting? Uh, it's a soft box with, with a speed light in it and the cards. Okay. White card. So you got this. Oh, I love the fact that you brought that soft box. Look how close you have it. Yeah. Yes. Yes, that's exactly where it goes. And look how soft the light is. So many times people go, well, get the light in, it'll be too harsh. No, just the opposite. It becomes extremely soft. Lovely. Good. Uh, D850 speed light. Uh, on the cake. So you focus stack the cake here. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yes, I did. Yeah. Nice. You have a, a, a nice blend of traditional and modern look to the work because um, I didn't think of the focus stacking, but when I saw this, I, I saw this image, I thought that looks really cool. Now I realize why. That'd be very hard to get that in focus and this in focus at the same time. Yes, it was. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but I focus, I, when I focus stacked it, I took all the steps right the way back to the eggs, but then it didn't look quite right to have the eggs completely in focus. Uh -huh. So I knocked off some of the images and only did 10 images instead. Yep, absolutely agree with you. I think sometimes um, because we can focus stack all the way to the edge, we do. 
And in reality, maybe we shouldn't, mm -hmm. you know, maybe not everything has to be that sharp, maybe just the subject. And that's what I like. Yeah. You did very well. Got a little, little soft the back there. That works out. That's really remarkable. Thank you, Jan. Thank you. The 850 and yeah. uh, speed light. Wonderful. Okay, Kareen. Morning, Don. Good morning. Um, well, I'm going to go out on a limb and rule out a uh, uh, vegan. Yeah. <laughs> um, the warm colors are amazing. Everything has that. Uh, you, did you pull your colors off of your background here? To. Well, uh, it was just luck, I think. Um, we've. It was shot in the kitchen, so we had a overhead light on at the same time, an LED light, and it just warmed everything up a bit. It did. Now, how did you cool your meat back down over here? Because you did. Did you, you do that in Lightroom? Yep. yep. Got it. Photoshop. Yeah. Very nice. Good. Well done. Because tungsten light, while it warms everything, it just kills greens. Yep. Just turns them muddy. So you just brought your greens back into the fold here. Yep. Nice. Tell the story. The the old. If you're going to get one of these, folks, you got uh, two choices. You can get one that's brand new and shiny, or you can get an old one with patina on it. If you get anything that's been used, it's going to have scratches, and you're going to be sitting in front of Photoshop. So if you're out good Goodwill or or um, looking for relics in antique stores, an old beat up cleaver goes in your set. You, you, you may not actually cook with it, but it sure is much preferable than trying to um, take all the scratches and dings and stuff out of one that's been slightly used. Very cool. What uh, camera, Kareem? Uh, Nikon D810. Okay. Uh, you've got uh, this, this whole um, warming thing that you did with the tungsten light really worked. Really worked. I would only suggest that you go back in because I I'm picking up I'm sensing a little bit of tungsten in these greens. Okay. Yep. Let's 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 get these greens back to like that green here and and that green up there. It looks like you did so nicely there. Okay. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Very cool. And just a big old window. Just a big old window, south facing, so um, be north facing for you guys in the southern hemisphere. Okay, big window there and uh, some uh, over, over lights, day and some yeah, shop over, lights or something going on. Yep. Very cool. Nicely done. Nicely done. Thank you. Makes a difference. Audi neighbors. Yes, I'm here. Hi, Audi. Those look great. Yeah, this is uh, a revisit to the Yorkshire. Yeah, nice. Oh, I like your little drips. Thank you. Yeah. Shots inside the oven. Mm -hmm. uh, my sweet mate had an old prop there. I never could figure out what it was until we moved it around. And he had purchased an old stove and then cleaned it up, ripped off the back, and then cleaned up the stove, repainted it the whole bit, had the racks in it and everything. And what he did was he used it to shoot from the, you've seen the shots of, from the back of the stove when someone's, you know, they're opening yes. the thing and they're looking in at the stuff, right? Yeah. Uh, and then the top of it, he had a soft box in it. He used to, you know, he's a big ad shooter and he used it like a dozen times for different uh, ads and stuff. But he'd set his eight by ten camera up behind that thing and shoot through it. But you, you would swear you were in the oven. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Actually, my wife and I were were discussing that uh, that uh, very uh, that very thing because I'd heard of the photographers doing that, and yeah. and for refrigerators also. Yep, for refrigerators up. Yep, Just buy an old one, refurbish it beautifully, paint, spray paint, and everything, uh, and then you know you just got that shell. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nicely done, sir. 
Well, thank you. Now thank today, you. of course, they just grab a stock shot and fill it in with Photoshop. But <laughs> back in the day, we did not have Photoshop. We had to shoot what we what was in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. uh, I like your your um, in, so a medium shot, a, a tighter shot, um, another medium shot, a tight shot, and a very tight shot. So you keep the eye moving throughout. It doesn't have that sort of snapshot. Oh, you know, good. Thank you. Feel to it. Yeah. How did you light it, Adi? We're gonna. Oh, uh, it was. Uh, there you go. Kind of brute force, <laughs> the five by five uh, with my Norman. Yeah. Yeah. That's. And and what I really liked about the setup was I could actually light uh, the interior of the oven with it. Yeah, and you can um, uh, with a light this big, you can move all around in here. Mm -hmm. Right. Without having to reset the light. Yeah. What, what uh, you're using a Norman 202. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's not a lot of light. What ISO were you? Oh, I was at uh, 100. 100. Okay. Yeah. I, and I was using uh, a new uh, a new lens. Uh, I got an early uh, Christmas present. I got the, uh, the, the Nikon uh, 35 millimeter F2. Okay. Well, the 35 millimeter gives you a little bit of extra depth of field. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the F2 lets you come in nice and close and, and do stuff like that. I, it's my, my, if I had to be stuck on a, on a shoot with only one lens, that's the, that's the lens. Uh, yeah. 30, that, 35 F2. Yeah. It, uh, yeah, it, it, it's a really good lens from what I've been reading about. And it's, it's in fact, it's one of the few uh, D series that uh, Nikon still uh, uh, producing. Yeah. They're very great. They're great lenses. You'll have fun with that lens, I'll tell you. Nicely done, Adi. Thank you. Kit. Hi, Don. Hi, Kit. Got a nice little thing going here. Nicely done. All right. Um, your light is coming from the left in all the shots, so we've maintained that that uh, uniformity like that. Nice pour shot. Yeah. Did it you was, have somebody pour it? I had my wife pour it. I tried it myself and didn't like the results, you know, the hand-eye coordination thing, but mm -hmm. enlisted an assistant. There you go. There you go. And I, the other thing I really like, Kit, is that the reds of your strawberries are all the same reds. This is a little bit deeper, but it's still the same red. Uh, I like that a lot. Yeah, I tried to keep those similar. Little things like that are what clients look for. You know, uniformity. They don't want to do an essay in the magazine about food and have the food be a different color in every shot. You know, that's mm -hmm. um, something that consumers will actually notice. Looks very good, Kit. Your lighting is a window? No, softbox. Look at that. How big is the, is the Raya? Um, it's it's like a two foot by two foot. Okay. Kind of a medium. Yep. And I kept getting reflections off the off the countertop, so I had to put black cards behind it because there was windows, and I kept getting oh, okay shadows. Okay. Yeah, because the window light, you're going to pick it up even with uh, high shutter speed because it's a reflection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very nice. Okay, good. Well thought out. Yeah, thanks. Well thought out. And those little black cards keep the reflections down? Yeah. Yep. Like it. Oh, this is cool. Ilona, I love your color palette here. Hi, Don. How are you? Yeah, very good. I like this sort of light blue, this little cold tone you've got all the way through here. Very nice. A very wintry looking. Christmas. Yeah. Well, red really stands out there, doesn't it? So making, you're making cookies and you're filling in the cookies with uh, these guys? No, that's just for, um, I mean, you could, but I ended up using kind of a raspberry jam. Oh, okay. 
Wow, it's very festive and it's very nicely done. Wow, I like your your uh, the open cubed butter, the colors that you have, having the that very slight cool tone to it lets the or the browns and the yellows and everything be nice and warm over here. The skin tones are nice and warm. Uh, the red pops out all the way through here, and that's really cool that you used a blue. Um, uh, yeah. towel here you could have gone green um but i think you probably wanted to keep it more subtle and i'm glad you didn't go red because that picture the this picture then would just be like so dominant right i kind of needed the bluish balance because i have kind of grayish blue in the napkin on top so i figured i need another blue yep yes very nice Yeah, really, really nice. I love the, the little sparkly lights back there. It's a good story. Shoot down, shoot down, shoot down, and then shoot it natural. This is where we would see it, you know, if we were looking at the cookies, that sort of natural uh, down. Really like it. Um, yeah, it's kind of heavy within the reach for the last one. What's that now? Uh, for the last picture, the idea was kind of to have it within the reach, kind of, and you can just extend your hand and grab it. Yep, exactly. So it's very much more natural than the straight down one. Uh, then we get over here, we got a silver card, all of your ingredients. And so the light is behind you? Oh, yes, yeah. so I'm shooting from the top. So I'm using only the window light. And the first day I was shooting, it was kind of on and off rain, so it was more cloudy. So the settings, I had to shoot within two or three days because uh, the dough had to set in the fridge overnight. Um, so each time, the first two pictures are obviously the same day and then the other two are different days. Okay. So I finished the last one this morning, basically, when I had to finish last night the cookies. So it's a few day process. So I, I, I figured out it's actually side lighting. When I, I clicked over here, the first thing I thought is front lighting, it's not front lit no, no, no. oh no it's side lit you're shooting straight down side. yeah really nice 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 soft shadows that that uh, enhance the roundness of the bowls the cookies look good with the texture all the way through them uh and your your setup is very cool very nice you're getting a pretty good kick off this silver uh card too right yes Yes, it, yes, absolutely. Especially with the cookies, I needed it because they were getting a little dark uh, towards the right. So I needed to uh, lit them up and especially also the stack of them on the right was getting too dark. So you order to have more light. Do you have it there for all the shots? Yes, except that the cookies at the bottom, I literally just leaned it on the table. So it was right there um, okay. to get as much uh, light as possible. Okay. So it's a little darker outside. All right, very nice. Yeah, the uh, uh, this the silver might be uh, adding a little bit to your blue tone as well. Right. Very good. Thank you. Yep. Oh, we got another one from Jean. That's nice, Jean. I like this one better. But I didn't have four shots, so. Yeah. No, I like this one too. This is. Yeah, I think I do like it better as a group. Yeah. Nice. Thanks. Everything the same. Same light setup. Same light. Nothing different. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you shot more than than one because now you can have one in this portfolio and one in that portfolio and yes. you know, mix and match. Whenever you're shooting, get more than you need, for sure. Bonnie, 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 Bonnie Mitchell. Hi. Hi. Yes, I'm here. Hi. Hi. Wow, the apple shot is stunning. Did you focus stack that for a while? No, no. I just used uh, the biggest, you know, f-stop I could get away with, or the, you know. Sure. You're down at f uh, f16 what, or something. What lens is this? It's a 2470. Yeah, so 16. Does it go to 22? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, at 22, and you're out at the 
at 70, right? No, I think, uh, hang on, I'll tell you. Um, I have it written down here. Trying to be prepared. <laughs> the, the whole apples. It was, um, it was F16 and the lens was at 42 millimeters. Oh, okay. It doesn't seem that wide to me, but all right, yeah. That's just a lovely well, shot. It really grabs you. It was a bigger shot and I cropped it in. So I don't know if that ah, makes okay. a difference. Yeah, that, that's what fooled me. Then. Yeah. yeah. It, this does look more telephoto ish from the, the sides. Than it. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Uh, so we start with this very close up, beautifully lit uh, artistic shot. Uh, we go over to a, a uh, this where the angle is, I don't know if it's, it looks like we're in the apples themselves. Now we're coming to a more natural angle, mm -hmm. uh, you know, looking at it. Now we come into a very low shot. I mean, we're right down on the surface and then we do it a top down. So you, your variety is great. You know, okay. let's keep the eye moving through it. Don't always shoot from the same point of view for every shot. The only exception would be um, lay flat when you're doing um, a series of images for, for someone who wants lay flat, then lay flat you can get away with. Uh, but you wouldn't want to shoot all of these from that same 45 or that very low uh, type feeling here. This looks really good. Oh, thank you. The greens are consistent and you found a green rolling pin. Good for you. <laughs> well, I had to tweak the green a little bit. Um, it's actually more of a bluer green than that. So it didn't quite go. I, I didn't know if all those, because there's a couple of little different shades of green in there. I didn't know if that really worked or not, but um, I tried them kind of all the same color and that did not work. Yeah, it, uh, it's, it's better this way than if, if you had chosen, you know, another color, like orange or something like that. Not good. Uh, no. So this green does work very well because this all these color greens can be found down in here okay you know yeah yeah okay very cool, cool. And, and camera uh 60d canon 60d all right very very nice really nice shot mm. thank wow. you there's your lighting look at your lighting oh like, <laughs> like that i used a different lighting on every shot because I kind of reshot. I took a lot of shots and I kind of did some reshooting and some of them were during the day. The apples were during the day with a nice sunny day with window light coming in. Um, those other two that are shown there, I used one of those LED panels with a scrim and those were basically shot in the evening. And then the rolling pin was just some indirect light from the kitchen window on a fairly sunny day. How are you running your camera using the flip out screen? Yep, and uh, it's tethered. Yep. Yep, the flip out screen when you're up this high, that's just really, really great. Yep, really and great. a chair, climbing up on a chair. Yeah. <laughs> Remember rule number one of this class is don't hurt yourself, okay? Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, really nice, Bonnie. Thank you. Yep. Wow. Melvin. Hello. Hi. So you tell the story of uh, uh, stuffed zucchini. Stuff. Well, it's not zucchini. It's another squash. I don't know the name exactly. Same family. Looks like zucchini to me. So I don't know. So you core it, stuff the meat in it, and then bake it. Yeah, you cook it in a pot. Tomato juice. Very cool. I'm not crazy about the picture being in the background. That's the microwave. Okay. Yeah. It, it, you know what it does is it, it draws your eye. It draws your eye, especially because you're looking at this beautifully done sprinkled salt. And then okay. we come right back up to that. Yeah. I would rather just see the wood behind it. Um, okay. Simplify it. Because you've done that, all of your shots are very simplified. Close up in the sink, close up here, 
-hmm. everything is super controlled in your frame and that one's not controlled it looks uh, like okay, okay. yeah okay All right. what i can do yeah how did you like this one well i used uh, one stroke no i don't have a bts because oh, i was okay. moving around uh uh, but I'm basically using one stroke with a 30-degree 30, uh, 30 grid, and it's always backlit. And so I have... You're doing everything with the grid? Yeah, everything. And uh, I also have a speed light on right next to the subject, pointing straight at the ceiling to sort of put in some ambient light. Oh, okay, got it. Because everything would be black. You wouldn't even see anything in the back of the meat there. It, it would be dark. So got I have it. the speed light creating the ambient light. And that's about it. Uh, a bounce card when needed. Okay. You know, like for the first one with the water, I, I needed a bounce card on the, on the left side. Um, I think I used a bounce card for the meat also. And for the last one uh, with the cooked, the cooked, um, uh, cooked item. In the, in the Very nice. Good job. Thank you. You missed class this week. I did. I'm guilty. Yeah. Don't miss it next week. Jerry. Jerry here? Jerry. Going once, going twice. Nice. Nicely done. They look a little dark to me, Jerry. This one does. I love this one. This is very nice. Got a nice little highlight. It's very mysterious looking. Um, but I think that one's a little bit darker here than this one. I'd like to see this come up just a little bit. Um, thank you. Very good. Very good. Hi, Don. Uh, I'm sorry, who? Oh, sorry, Jerry here. Oh. Um, did you catch it or no? I, I just caught some of it. Oh, okay. Uh, these are just a little dark for me. Okay. Th th this is gorgeous. This is absolutely gorgeous. Um, that shot's a keeper pretty much as it is. I wouldn't even have you do anything. That one, I'd have you pull it up a little bit because I bet if you go in and sample the sugar here, you're going to find that it's very gray. Okay. And let's bring it up. The grayness in the sugar here, I'm willing to live with because you've got all this little stuff going on down here. And I think it makes it a very romantic, slightly dark, underexposed, and yet mysterious looking image. A little kicker light coming from the back is great. So I really, really like this shot. This shot I think will work when you pull it up just a little bit. Okay. Okay. Um, use Lightroom or Photoshop? Uh, or in Photoshop, because I, I combine the the lights in the back in the background in that second shot. Got it. Okay. All right. Very good. Very good, my friend. Very good. What camera did you use? Thank you. Gary? It's an XT2 with the 80 millimeter macro. Okay. And your what's your lighting? Um, soft, yeah. Softbox here. I uh, love you put the white card over it like that. That's very cool. It, it brings it down and that's the shot that we're looking at here yeah just a really lovely shot this one will work very well too this one's just really very dark in the front too dark up front here we needed much more fill here but these two are, are lovely this is great nicely done okay thank you yeah. nicely done carla hi don hi i love your color palette thanks cool 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 and then we have the nice warm shot at the end and that was uh i'm sure part of the plan kind of, not really i mean that's the only one that i think maybe it will be better with the the light blue i don't know just yeah. looking at them together well it just pops it it pops it very nicely um okay. it says here tortillas are made out of our tortillas in costa rica are a big part of our culture uh, i'm in phoenix big part of my culture as well Lots yeah of tortillas are great yeah um, the more cheese, the better. So we make them with cheese, a lot of cheese. I have a, a friend here whose <laughs> wife makes cinnamon raisin tortillas. 
Mm, that's <sighs> different. They're, they are. They shouldn't be allowed. They're <laughs> so good. They're so fattening. Um, this is really nice. You've kept uh, top down side image showing the ingredients, etc. Another top down and a final top down. And like I said, I really like the warmth of this. It's almost like out of the kitchen and onto the table, nice warm, fuzzy feeling to it. Yeah, that was actually how it was. <laughs> yeah. So what is the, uh, what's your lighting? Oh, right there. Oh, wow. That's nice. Love this little structure you've built here. You get <laughs> some light up into that as well. It was mostly for the cuddlery. Mm -hmm. So. And it worked really well for that. The highlights in your pans are nice. The 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 flower is nice. Like re really really well done. What did you use to shoot them? Um, like the camera or the? Yeah, the camera. It was a Canon sixty Mark II. Okay, f fourteen ISO two hundred twenty four to one hundred five. Yeah. yeah. Nicely done, Carla. Thanks, Don. I wasn't sure, but thanks. <laughs> yeah. Is that the last shot, folks? Or did someone upload pictures while we were? Uh, Don, it's Phyllis. Did you start with me or something? Yeah, you're up at top, Phyllis. So we're going to have to go back. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's all right. Uh, but first, we're going to do uh, Rob, Ron Mayhew. Ron, yes, these, I'm here. these are really cool shots, man. That's well, thank a lot you. Of work. Yes, it was. <laughs> Um, but it's been good eating, though. Uh, <laughs> I was just thinking you, it pretty much will take you through mid-December, shouldn't it? A lot of food. Uh, we're, we're still working on it. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, this is uh, this this is your composition is very well done. This is very very cool, Ron. Uh, all the way through here, they they have a uh, feeling of, of course, the romantic uh, period. You know, you can see. Um, paintings from the 14th century this way, right? Exactly, um, yes. Yeah, that's what you were going for, I'm sure. Um, well, that that's what led has led me here. I've been doing a series of still lifes reminiscent of, of the Dutch masters of the 17th century. And right. um, so it's, you know, it's kind of an evolution for me. Yeah. So. And I was at the um, it was kind of an experiment experiment with um, with the uh, dark and moody type lighting, and you'll see in the uh, in the behind the scenes a couple of the setups. So. Well, it has a it has a really nice feel, and you're doing a lot of still lifes in this this feel. Are you are uh, you, are you a prop yes or? yeah not not as not as elaborately propped, but uh. <laughs> are you are you a professional? I'm, I'm, it's, it's just a serious, very serious hobby. I, okay. Because, um, yeah. Uh, yeah, when you have such a succinct style as this, um, it, it would be noticed. You'll be noticed for this. Yeah. Yes, yes. Because this is very unlike what I would say uh, right now is mainstream food shooting. That's good. Yeah. That's good, you know. There's plenty well, and, of and, and the two that are top down, that, I mean, that's the first I've, I've done of the top down uh, because I've been kind of bucking that trend, but I thought, well, I, I need to try it. So. But you kept your distinct lighting on this, that, that feel and that very, very um, precision based composition that takes you quite a while, I'm sure, uh, to put Yes, together. it does. It does. <laughs> You sketch this out, uh, and you know, in, in my mind's eye, you know, for a day or two before I start. But I, I find that I really can't figure it all out. I, I just get the main pieces set to where I think they should be, and then and fill, kind of fill in. Got yeah. it. Yeah, really nice. But I, th I think some of the color palette too, though, beforehand. So um, they're they're very well done. So lots of flags, flags. Yeah, you're bringing in a big wide box through a uh, diffuser, but then you're flagging it to just get 
elements of that light, just get part of it to come through. Yeah, I've even blocked the top so I don't get the uh, ceiling reflection. Yeah, I love the candle. And that's just with the strobe that that illuminated um, even with the strobe firing. So yeah, I didn't have to add that or. And what you're doing here will give you a different kind of light than if you just use a two foot by two foot softbox here. Um, because you do have a big light coming through a big diffuser and then you're just using a part of it. That's uh, one of the way, you know what, uh, very Rembrandt like lighting, right? Um, Rembrandt yeah. opened, opened doors was his lovely, his favorite lighting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just, just inside the doorway. So the, the north light would just softly wash over the subject. Um, but if you go and, and spend time with the Dutch masters, Jabber, you always have a kicker, right? Yes, you, Nine yeah, times out you, of ten, there's a little kicker coming back to get that side of the candlestick or get that side of the, the, the squash or something over there. And that was just really the natural kickers that would come back in someone's home, you know? Mm -hmm. It'd be the opposite white wall or whatever. That, yep. Uh, yeah, yeah, you put the, the lit side against the dark, dark wall and the shadow side against the light wall as the light is going past the subject. Very nicely done, Ron. Uh, what, well, what thank camera you. are you using? Uh, say again? What camera are you using? Oh, it's an OMD Mark I. Uh, okay. Nice camera as well. Um, all right. So we have Phyllis's shot. Uh, nicely done, Phyllis. Really pretty. Uh, you got the same cutting board on all of these. I like that very much. The only thing that I wonder about this cutting board is a little bit of blue in it. Yeah. You don't. Right in the lighting, it is the same board, you're right. Yeah. Yeah, there's no blue in any of these, but this one just looks a little blue. Uh, okay. Do you use Lightroom? Yes, and I am I wish I had learned this canvas business of getting <laughs> on one, you know, better framed. Yeah, that's all right. You got it. There's nothing wrong with this. Um, in Lightroom, you don't have to do anything except pull this image up in Lightroom. Okay. Change your um, color temperature. Just warm it a little, okay. just a little tiny bit, so it matches that, and you'll be you'll be gold on that. All right. Uh, very nice. So it's a lemon pie or lemon cake. Yes, a Sicilian lemon cake. All right. And I wished I could have made it again. I didn't like the crack on the middle of the cake, and I probably should have realigned the candles differently. But the birthday boy was waiting. Nah, no problem, no problem. That's an easy fix in Photoshop. Yeah. Yeah, I, content aware fill and you're- Right, you know, yeah, I probably should have done that afterwards. Anyway, yeah. thank you very much. Lovely light, the light is coming from, did you put It's a, a window, on? you'll see my crazy yeah. setup there. Yeah. Lovely light, this is a great place to shoot. Uh, where is this, Phyllis, where are you it, living? I'm in New York City, it's my the corner of my kitchen. Got it. It's the only window, and that window faces west. Sorry, east, east. East, okay. So that window over there gets some some light on it, or that's it, that wall. It will bounce back, yeah. Pretty much all day. Right. Wow, nice. Lovely soft light coming in here. Look how pretty it looks here. That's just great. I love that. Love that. Nice Thank, you Thank you very much. Yeah. Absolutely. And who else did we miss? If you see your picture on here that we missed you. Oh, um, I'm there, Julie. You're down a little bit, Julie, aren't you? Uh, no, you just oh, passed Julie. it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I really like how you use the window light for these two and the strobe yeah. for these two, but you really can't tell. And that's, yeah. that's nice. That's really nice. The top down is great for the ingredients. Uh, and then the, uh, the meatball here in the spaghetti just has a nice, nice um, natural feel to it, you know, like you're going to eat it. Um, and now that I've seen your spaghetti and meatballs and I've seen all that, all that the tortillas, 
I, I love spaghetti. I love meatballs and tortillas. I like spaghetti and, and meatballs and tortillas. <laughs> my own my own dish. No one else likes it in my family. <laughs> but yeah, really nice. Gonna have to have lunch here shortly. Uh, and this is your your window light. Is this is no a, this. This that's is the window his, light. Yeah, that's the window famous light. window. Yeah. Yep. The window that's launched a thousand beautiful images. <laughs> uh, and then you you did this with the just the soft box. What is this? Is this a counterweight? Um, yeah, that's the weight on my uh, tripod. Got it. Okay. But and the camera's facing down. And then next to it is a black like poster board, you know, a flat. Right. Yeah. So you're you're adding to the shadow rather than taking it away, right? Which gives it that beautiful deep shadow all along the the, the shadow sides of things. Really lovely shots. Really Thank good you. for you. Did you, have, you. did you have customers at the gallery this morning? Uh, it's we're in the middle of a snowstorm. It's starting this afternoon, so no. We thought we'd be mobbed because we have been every day, but. Um, people are staying home. Okay. Yeah. Snowstorm, huh? Yeah, we're supposed to get up to foot. We'll see. Wow. We'll see. Wow. And so it begins, huh? Yep. It is December. Yes, it is. Uh, did I miss somebody else's? I don't think I did. I think it was Julian Ron. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for coming along. I did put up that I was going to do a chef assignment. I have not had time to put the assignment together. But if you guys would like to do a picture of a chef working in the kitchen, maybe maybe you do a close-up of hands on a knife. Maybe you do uh, someone standing there holding their their ingredients. One of the reasons that I... That I uh, I'm not sure, depending on where you are, where you can do that. Every, everything is seeming to be uh, shut down again, uh, especially out here in the West. They're talking about shutting everything down. In LA, you can't even go to your neighbor's house. You're not allowed to walk outside starting Sunday. Um, so I don't, I don't know. If, if it's something you want to do, let me know. You guys want to do it? You want to do a chef shot? Yes, I would. Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Then I will put up a uh, uh, a nine for next weekend. Uh, we'll do a chef shot, and I will try to get something up tomorrow. Some of the chef shots and things that I put together, I will get them up. I promise tomorrow by noon. So uh, you can go up there. There'll be a a page there for you to see examples of and some lighting ideas, etc., for the chef shot. And we will uh, commence to have the chef shot next week and have that be uh, our last meeting together. All right. All right, thank everybody. Thank you. 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 I know. Don, I have a question. Yeah. What's the next date week going to be? <laughs> well, you know, it was going to be portraits. Huh? I don't know if we can do portraits with uh, all that's going on with this uh, COVID thing. That's um, true. Uh, it, I don't want to put somebody in a position where they're like, I can't find anybody to shoot because I'm not allowed to go outside, you know, that type of thing. So um, the short answer is probably not portraits. Uh, mm -hmm. We've done uh, uh, still life and food, correct? Okay. Yes. So yes. How would you feel about consumer products? Perfume, yeah. uh, cans, yeah, wine, Oh yeah, a great idea. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Product, real honest to God product. Um, yeah. Okay, then let's do that. One of, uh, one of my uh, students went to the dollar store and got $1 sunglasses and he made photographs of them for his uh, final shot. He did photographs of the, the sunglasses and they look absolutely amazing. Yes, Mark. Just amazing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, he's gonna go down and get 10 pair of sunglasses. 
if we're going to use his photographs and we're going to put them up on eBay for, for uh, 1995. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And we're going to see if the Hey, Don, great you're going to need a lot of sunglasses to buy that next camera. Well, you know, do you know how many people make a living buying stuff at the dollar store and reselling it on eBay and Amazon? Thousands. Thousands of people do that. Um, there's no law against it. Uh, but if you know, if you can make it look as good as Mark Lund made those one dollar sunglasses look, you know, we're gonna see if it works. And we're not gonna feel bad about it. Buy a lot of film cameras. Uh, what's that? I said that'll buy a lot of film cameras, Don. Oh, thank you for reminding me. That's the third touch point, right? I went to eBay in the week. <laughs> the Canon F5. I needed this camera like I need a hole in my head, but it is so beautiful. I'm so happy with it. And I'm putting a roll of film in it and hitting the streets right now. Everybody have a great weekend. We'll see you next week for Chef Shots. Take care. Thanks, Doug. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Have a good Bye, weekend. Everybody.